Good evening, City Mission, uh, our German family. Good evening, how you doing? And those who may be watching uh, in the States, it's good morning for you, to you. Um, we're gonna begin our our, uh, our weekly Bible study. Good evening. City where we're Mission. in uh, Experiencing God. We're, in, we're currently in unit seven um, on day three now. Um, what I want to do uh, before we get started is really just kind of do a quick review and finish up day, finish up day two, uh, finish the end of day two, and then kind of launch into day three. Day three is kind of short, um, but I think we're going to have just a wonderful time um, tonight in the Lord. Um, Danny, I see you watching. Um, Caroline, how are you doing? I'm not sure who else we have on at this time, but uh, we're going to pray. And we're going to jump right into it. Um, and we're going to try to end right at 8 p.m., um, right around 8 p.m. If we end a little earlier, uh, um, bless the Lord. Um, but I'm going to try my best not to go over 8 p.m. To, uh, to respect your time. So let's get started. We're going to pray and just uh, we know that the Holy Spirit is, is omnipresent, but we're going to invite him into our service personally, invite them into our service, our virtual service uh, tonight. So Father, we thank you for being here. We thank you for your presence. And now that you're here, God, we know that anything's possible. I pray, oh God, that you would do the unthinkable, the impossible, the imaginable, imaginable. 
in our homes and we call them our home churches right now. God, I pray that you would set free, that you would heal, that you would encourage, that you would shape us and make us into the image of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we trust you on tonight. Without borders, we release our faith. I pray, oh God, that you would strengthen and build our faith tonight. Holy Spirit, while I am facilitating this, we ask God that you would do the teaching, that you would um, not only give us wisdom in our heads, but I pray, oh Lord, that that wisdom would trickle down into our hearts and God, we would be disciples that look forward to making other, other disciples. We would be present, oh God. And God, I pray that you would fill us, equip us to be disciples that make other disciples. We thank you tonight and we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, well, um, like always, we're gonna start the way we traditionally start and um, we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, give you some memory verses. And if you've been tracking with us from day one, all the way up until, until now, uh, you should have these memory verses memorized. So we're gonna look at John 15 and five. That's our first, our very first memory verse. In, and we've quoted this memory verse, this verse week after week, month after month. And it's, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man, remain in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing, nothing great, nothing good. That's John 15 and five. And then we have Psalm 20 and seven. And that says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we, the people of God, disciples, disciples follower of God, we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. And then Matthew 22, the great, the great commandment. This says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. That's Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 38. And then we have John chapter 14, verses uh, 21. And it says this, whoever has my commands and obeys them. So it's one thing to have them. There's another thing to obey them. So whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too, Jesus, I too will love him. And I will show myself to him or her. So there's a lot in that verse in and of itself. He it says, if we have his commandments and, obeys the, and obey them, that means we love the father. And then Jesus says, he who loves, he who, 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 who does those things will be loved by my father and I too will love them and I will show myself to them. Amen, that's John chapter 14, verses 21. Two more, two more verses. John chapter eight, verses 47. It says, he who belongs to God hears what God says. So if I belong to God, if I'm a sheep, I hear the voice of Jesus. The reason why I do not hear or the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. The reason we do not hear is that we do not belong to God when we're connected with the Father, we hear the voice of Jesus. Oftentimes we get distracted. Oftentimes we allow other voices to, to, to exceed the voice of God. Oftentimes we change the channel to something else that's more pleasing and tickling to our ear. Jesus says, if you belong to me, you will hear me. Amen. And then and then John chapter 15, uh, John chapter 5, verse 19. I said we only had two more. We have two more now. John chapter 5, verses 19. Uh, Jesus gave them this answer. He says, Verily, truly, I tell you, 
the son cannot do nothing by himself. This is, this is uh, the son of God saying, I can't do anything by myself. Man, that is so powerful. And I'm the, I, I think we can take a lot out of that verse that there is no one walking on this planet that should boast about the giftings that God gives them. Jesus said this is self. I can do nothing. The son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees the father doing because whatever the father does, the son also does. The son also does. So we've got to be imitators, imitators of Jesus Christ. Paul says, um, follow me as I follow Christ. And as we mature in our walk, that should be our desire that we will be sometimes the only Bible that someone may see. We are that on our jobs oftentimes, and we're that in our homes often, oftentimes. That be, look at me. I'm gonna make mistakes, but I'm going to be an example. I'm gonna be an imitator of Jesus Christ. And then our last verse, our last verse, Hebrews chapter 11, verses six. And that's what this crisis of belief is all, is all about. Without faith. It didn't say it, that word faith, that five letter word is so important. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he's a rewarder of them that diligently, that earnestly, goes after him or seeks him. I'll repeat that. I want to repeat that one more time. Hebrews chapter 11, verses six, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he, he exists. It's not a fairy tale that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly or diligently seeks after him. Amen. If you have any comments on that last verse, um, drop it in the comment box. I want you to engage with me during this time today. Um, I know typically if we were all together, we would be communicating back and forth. And if you're on Zoom and you have a comment, um, raise your hand there's a little uh, button that you can click to raise your hand and then uh, you'll be unmuted. And uh, I'll allow you to uh, provide just short comments so that we can continue to, to flow in the Bible study. But I want, I, want, I want you to interact with me. I have some points. I have some, uh, some moments in the study where I'll just pause and ask you to comment. So let's, let's interact. Let's have a good time tonight. Last week, we talked about encounters with God. We talked about encounters with God require faith. They require that five-letter word, faith. And we said last night, I mean, last week, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we gave uh, just a, a number of examples of what faith was. Faith is taking the first step before God reveals the second step. That's how we define faith. We also said faith is the process of unlearning fears and relearning trust. Faith is the willingness to look foolish. It's the willingness to look crazy because you believe in your heart that you heard God and God has challenged you to do seemingly impossible, the impossibility, but we know that with man, these things are impossible, but with God, all things, all things. That, that word A-L-L -L in the Greek and, and in the Hebrew, all, it means all. It means absolutely all things are possible with Christ. So last week, we talked uh, a lot about encounters with God require faith. Any encounter with God, when God, when you encounter God, whether it's studying your word and, and, and a scripture just speaks to you, 
it's a challenge by God or whether you're in your prayer closet praying with an open Bible and God speaks to you, he's going to challenge you to do seemingly the impossible. And he, with him, he can make that possible in your life. So encounters with God require faith. And when you say yes to God, when you say yes to God, you are saying yes to something only God can do. I'll say that again. When you say, yes, Lord, yes, God, when you surrender, when you say yes, you are saying yes to something only God can do. It cannot be accomplished by you alone. I'll give you some examples and then we'll move. Moses, he could not deliver the children of Israel from Pharaoh's army. He could not do that without the hand of God in his life. I, and I hope this speaks to some of you tonight. Moses could not do that without the hand of God. He couldn't cross the Red Sea. He couldn't lead the children of Israel through the Red Sea on dry ground without God being in his life, without faith. He couldn't produce water from a rock. And Moses certainly could not provide manna from heaven had not God been involved. And, not he had, and if he did not have faith, it would not have happened in Moses' life. Moses had to have faith that God, the God who called him, would be the God who would be with him. The God who called him would be the same God. The same God would accomplish what he said he would do. And he did that in the life of Moses. Joshua, on the other hand, Joshua could not have taken the Israelites through the Jordan River on dry ground. He could not have delivered or, or brought the walled cities down of Jericho without the hand of God and without faith. He could not have defeated the enemies. Joshua, if you look at scripture, Joshua could not have caused the sun to stand still. He could not have stopped the sun in the middle of the sky for a full day to give victory, to bring victory over the five kings that were against them. There has never, in the Bible says, there has never been a day like that before or since. This was impossible with Joshua. But with God, all things are possible. Very, very simple message. But it's something that, 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 that Christians are challenged with. When God gives us an, a, a God-sized assignment, it's God's responsibility to carry it through. It's our responsibility to have faith the size of a mustard seed to know if God has called me to it, God will deliver me through it. He would use, he would use me as a vessel if I had this, the faith the size of a mustard seed. In the New Testament, it was also true for the disciples. On their way, on their, as they walked with Jesus, Jesus, he, he, was, he was the model. He is the model. He is the example. Um, and as they walked with Jesus a number of times, there is no way that they could have fed the 5,000 plus their, their wives and their children. They could not have done that had it not been for Jesus, had it not been for their faith in him. They could not have healed the sick. They could not have raised the dead. Only God can do those things. And if we have the kind of faith, he says, if you have faith and doubt not, you could speak to the mountain and it has to be, it has to move. It has to be casted and it has to. When we have that kind of faith in Christ, he says mustard seed size faith, we can do just a variety of things. And this lesson, as we dig, as we delve deeper into the lesson, there's a question in there that asks, why do we not see this today? Why are not millennials, why are not uh, uh, people that are far away from God, why are they not interested in the church any longer? It's because we live a mundane Christian life, many of us. And God is challenging us 
to do something greater. He says, these, the, these things greater will you do as I go to the Father, greater. And that could mean a variety of things. It could mean more miracles. It could mean more salvations. We don't know, we speculate on that verse, but Jesus says, greater will you do, greater will you do as I go to the Father. I'll give you one more example. You remember Peter and John? You remember Peter and John, they healed the lame beggar at the gate called Beautiful. This man, he was legitimately lame and he had, he was authorized to sit there and he begged every day at the temple and Peter and John could have given him money. They could have given him money. They could have given him what he asked for and they, they would have continued to perpetuate his problem for many, many more years. That was something that they were capable of doing. But instead, they step into, they step into what God could only do. They step into, they had enough faith to tell this man, look at me, look at my eyes, look on me, look at me. This is what it says. It says, Peter said, silver, silver or gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. What have you uh, declared lately? Ha or have you declared anything lately? In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, my finances are fixed. In the name of Jesus, my relationship in the name of jesus my marriage is healed in the name of jesus i am i am an excellent parent in the name of jesus in the name what, what in the name of jesus the impossible can be made possible they said silver and gold we do not have and then they said get up and walk and taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. And he jumped to his feet and he began to walk. He began to run. And by that miracle, a testimony ensued. Oftentimes, what looks dead is only waiting on a man or a woman to have faith. What looks seemingly dead God is saying, I just need you to have faith and believe me that I can do greater. I can do greater. Amen. And when, 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 when Peter saw this, listen to this. Uh, when, when all the people saw this, this lame man walking and praising God, they recognized him as being the same man he, who used to sit by the gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and they were filled with amazement at what had happened to him. And listen to what Peter said. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why does it surprise you? This should be the norm. Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or our own godliness, we had made this man walk. Listen to this. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. Such a powerful, powerful testimony. And it's at the name of Jesus. It's, at, it's having that five letter word. It's having faith. It's having trust. It's having belief that if God said it, I believe it. I have to believe it. Amen. And then we'll see. We'll see some just incredible things happen in our life. Amen. I want to move on um, so we can get to, to day three. Um, you may be saying, how does this apply to me? How does, how does the miracles in the past apply to my today? 
yeah, I know Moses and, and I know Abraham and, and I know, um, I know uh, all of these mighty men and mighty women of valor, but how does this apply to me today? Can I tell you, God wants you to be yes men. He wants you to be yes women. And, 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 and to be a yes man, I see that as, and many of you probably see, see being a yes man as a negative, that has a negative connotation. I'm not a yes man for anyone, right? I, I'm not a yes woman for anyone, but God says it's okay to be a yes man. It's okay to be a yes woman for me. He wants us to be yes men and yes women to him and to his call because his desire again, is to do even greater works through you, through us, through the church. He can only do that through your yes. He can only do that through your yes. When God lets you know what he wants to do through you, it will be something that only he can do, that only he can do. What you believe, and, and, and uh, I love in the book, the book says, what you believe about him will determine what you do next. If he says, listen, I want you to go. What you believe about God will determine what you do next. Has he challenged you? What you believe about him determines what you will do next. What do you do when he calls you? There's only two options. Either you obey or either you disobey. Either you say, yes, Lord, I'm afraid, but God, I'm going to walk through my fear to accomplish the assignment that you've given me. Or you say, God, I'm afraid. I don't think it's the right timing. I don't think this. I don't, and you talk your way out of it. So delayed obedience is disobedience in God's eyes. Amen. Amen. Anybody, anybody got any comments? I'm, I'm looking now. If you have anything that you want to inter, uh, interject right now, uh, let me know. I see you, Cassandra. She says, the more we do what God has called us to do, the more our faith grows. The more our faith grows. It's like we level up. <laughs> I like that. It's like we level up with every act of faithful obedience. That's how we can fulfill the you will do all this and more. Level up. Uh, what other comments do we have in here? All right. I want you guys to talk to me. Um, I, have, I have some help. So whenever you shoot your comments, at the appropriate time, I'll pause and I'll address your comments. So let's have a dialogue. That's what this is about. I know I can't verbally hear you, but I can see what you write in there. Amen. All right. So encounters with God are God-sized encounters. Now, let me, let me caveat. Let me caveat that. Every encounter may not be this huge, grandiose encounter. Because God works in the small things, in the still small voices God speaks. He works in the small things. But many times you're going to encounter, when you encounter God, when you encounter the creator of the universe, it's a God-sized encounter. Have you ever said to yourself, God will never ask me to do something like that? Have you ever asked yourself, God will never ask me to do something that's impossible for me to do. Have you ever said that? Some of you might say, God would never ask me to do what he asked Abraham to do. God would never ask me to do what he asked Noah to do. That was just foolish. God would never ask me. He would never challenge me to, to do what Moses did. He would never challenge me to be a Peter or to be a John the Baptist. He would never challenge me to to, to go to the highways, and to go to the Strassens, to go to the streets, to go to the rough parts of where I live. He'll never challenge me to speak on the corner. Can I tell you? Yes, he will. He is the same God today, 
yesterday and he'll be the same God tomorrow. Yes, he will challenge you to go above and beyond your capabilities because it's not your capabilities that he wants the world to see. He wants the world to see his capabilities working through you. A surrendered heart is what God can use. Not, not, not an arrogant heart, not, not a boastful and a prideful heart. He's looking for someone to surrender to him and allow him to work through you. Amen. You remember Esther <clears throat> in Esther chapter four, uh, uh, Mordecai said, listen, Esther, we are in trouble right now. For if you, if, if, if you remain an undercover Christian, if you remain an undercover Jew, if you remain silent at this time, listen, God is going to choose somebody else. If you remain silent, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from, from, from another place. But you and your father's family, you will perish as well. You will perish. But listen to this. And who knows but that you have come for, to a royal position. Who knows that you have come to this particular assignment here in Germany or here in the States who knows that God has positioned you right where you are? You're trying to get out of it. God, this is not the position that I asked for, but God says, I didn't ask you that. I assigned you there for a reason. Listen, it says, and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And her response, Esther's response, Listen, that's the kind of yes that God is looking for. Her response was, let's pray. Let's fast and I'll go. Can you join me? Let's do this and I'll go. And she says, if I perish, I perish. If I perish, let it be so. But I want to step in all that God has. And it's not about me, it's to bring him glory. Have you ever uttered those words? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, James, James says he will use you as much as you will allow him to use you. Absolutely. He, he's, he, God is not a forcer. He allows you. He invites you to step into what he's already doing. He's not a forcer. He's a filler. He invites you to step into what uh, all that he has for you. Cassandra says, I think that that's one of the greatest motivators for me to be obedient. I don't want God to pass me over and, uh, and choose someone else. Listen. God is always working. He's working around us. And he's looking for a man. He's looking for a woman. He's looking for a teenager. He's looking for you to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. God saved you to use you. And many Christians, we, we, um, we say the Lord's Prayer and we think that's it. But if that was it, God would have took you home at the point of salvation. No, God wants you to participate. He wants us to participate. And we participate in a variety of ways, but he wants us to participate in bringing heaven's influence to this earth, right where you are. Start in Jerusalem. And for some of you, Jerusalem is your home. Jerusalem is your community. Have you ever spoken to your neighbor? I'm talking your physical neighbor. Have you ever prayed for your neighbor and sought, sought out salvation for your neighbor, interceded for your neighbor? Start right where, the, if you've got a house across the street from you, begin to pray for that neighbor. If you've got a, a neighbor behind you, begin to pray for that neighbor. If you've got a neighbor on your left and on your right, begin to seek the Lord 
for that neighbor. Start right there in Jerusalem. Many of us want to go all over the place. And God is saying, I've assigned you right where you are to be an Esther. To be an Esther. Who's to say that God will not challenge you beyond your capabilities because he will. He will assign you beyond your capabilities. The assignments God gave in the Bible were God-sized assignments. They were always beyond what people could do in their own strength because, because he wanted to demonstrate his nature, his strength, his provision, and his love to the people and a watching world. Listen, if we do only, if we only do what we can do, guess what? God will never get the glory. Who will get the glory? You and I will. If we do things in our own capabilities, in our own strength, with our own intellect, then we'll accept the praise that people give us. God says, I've got to take you beyond what you can do. You've got to step beyond your capabilities. And when you step beyond your capabilities, listen, I will show my strength. I will show my greatness. I will show my nature. My nature, my, my power, my strength, and my love will be shown to a watching world because a world is watching. Your kids are watching you. If you're doing the same thing every day, now there's some maintenance that has to be done. But listen, God is calling us to something greater. The only way the world will come to know him as Lord, him as Yahweh, him as the great I am, is when you begin to say yes to God's side's assignments. Man, hallelujah. <laughs> Julian, let me see what, hey, Lawrence, how you doing? Julian, Julian, are there circumstances? I'll, I'm answering Julian's question. Are there circumstances where you know you are on an assignment, but the end goal, the mission is unclear? Perhaps the clarity comes along later on, but not at the outset. So I, I could say yes to that, Julian. Absolutely. Um, you remember we said faith is sometimes taking the first step, not knowing the second step. And when I say taking the first step, not knowing the second step, who's in mind is Abraham. God says, listen, I have something for you, but I, I, I need you to go first. Once you go, then I'll show you where you're going. And then along the way, oh, I've got great and mighty things for you. You've got a seed inside of you where that seed will become a nation. But you first, you've got to go. You've got to go. And then along the way, comes my grace along the way comes uh, uh, revelation to what um, I want to show you. I hope I answered your question. Um, but there are, there are many circumstances. If God showed us every step of the way, if God showed us the mountaintop and then he showed us every step, many of us would be deterred because oftentimes that route to success, that route to, I'll just say the promised land, there, there are some valleys, some very, very difficult valleys along that journey. And if you know what you have to go through to get to where God wants you to be, oftentimes we might be deterred. So God gives you enough faith to take the first step and then builds that faith so that you can take enough step uh, another step. And then when you look back, you can say, man, God did this. I trust him. He did that. I trust him. And then your faith is being built along the way. Amen. What do you encounter? What, 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 what you do when you encounter God reveals what you truly believe about him. I'll say that again. What you do when you encounter God reveals what you truly believe about him. I'll say this, uh, John, uh, James, 
uh, James chapter two, verses 18. Listen to this. But someone would say, you have faith. And it's like, yes, I got mustard seed size faith. And James says, and I have works. He, also, he goes on to say, show me your faith without works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Authentic faith without works is dead. I would just say faith without works is dead. Authentic faith in Jesus Christ will uh, lead to works, will lead to steps, will lead to success. When we have faith, then some activity, some action is going to come uh, with us. It's going to, it, if, when we have faith in Christ, activities will ensue. Amen. I want to move to, um, to day three. We've got 20, I think we've got 20 more minutes, roughly 20 minutes. So encounters with God are God-sized. That's what we've been talking about. We know it. if we encounter God, we encounter creation, we encounter love, we encounter the creator. When we encounter God, encounters with God are God-sized. I wanna ask you a question. What is God interested in? I'll pause there. And, and, and this is, I'm going somewhere with this, but as it relates to uh, encounters with God, God sized encounters, what is God interested in? Drop your comments in the box. As it relates to us meeting God and, and, and seeing God, what is God interested in? What is God interested in? I'm looking, I want you to drop something in there. What is God interested in? God is interested, amen, in our obedience. You're absolutely right. He's interested in our obedience. God is interested in the world coming to know him through our obedience to his assignment. Amen. Sinitra said he's interested in our availability. Absolutely. We're interested in our capability. God, I'm not capable. God says, I'm not concerned that you're not capable. What I am concerned is, are you available? And if you are available and surrendered, then I'll work through you. I'll use you. Amen. God is interested through our availability, through our obedience, he's interested in the world coming to know him. And the only way people will know what God is like is to see him at work in our world. And what, how will he see us? How, how will the world see God at work? He'll see, the world will see God at work through you. The world will see God at work through a man, through a woman. The world will see God at work through us. Are you available and are you willing? Here's, I, mean, I wanna give you some examples. Um, just from your memory, and I'll, I'll, I'll read these statements and then you drop your comments in the box. Listen to this. Um, God gave people in the Bible, he gave them God-sized assignments. Uh, these things were humanly impossible for these men to do. And, and we've talked through most of them already. I want your, I just want your input. God told Abraham what to do. God told Abraham to do what? To do what? What did God tell Abraham to do that was God sized, that was out of Abraham's ability, his capability, his intellect? God told Abraham, to father a nation when Abraham had no sons and Sarah was past her childbearing age. He told him, through you, a nation, nations will come out of you. What did he tell Moses to do? He told Moses to do what? The, he told Moses, number one, to deliver Israel from Egypt. Wow. 
to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. He told Moses to cross the Red Sea. He told Moses to provide water from a rock to, to quench the thirst of the Israelites, my people. What did he tell uh, Gideon to do? What did he tell Gideon? How did God challenge Gideon? He says, Gideon, I want you to defeat this giant Midianite army with 300 men. Danny, Danny taught that uh, a few weeks ago. I want you to defeat. Now keep in mind, Gideon was a coward, but he turned a coward into a mighty man of valor. Listen, a connection with God changes your nature. You become a new creature. The Bible says all things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things are made new. When you encounter God, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, he took a coward and made him a giant killer. Midian, uh, Gideon, he defeated this giant Midianite army with 300, 120,000 men. He defeated them with 300 men. How about this? Jesus told the disciples to do what? What was out of their capability? And it's, I think this is in most of the, uh, um, most of the gospels, all th three at, at least. He told them to feed the multitude, feed, feed the multitude and make disciples and make disciples of all nations. How are 12 uneducated, most of them anyway, fishermen are going to make disciples of all nations? How does that apply to me? How does that apply to you? because none of these are humanly possible. When we see something that happens that only God can do, people come to know God. When, when, when people see miracles happen, man, it piques their interest. People get interested saying, man, what is going on? Um, Wesley, he says, if you light yourself, John Wesley says, if you light yourself on fire with passion, people would drive miles and miles to come see you burn. They'll come drive miles and miles to see what is causing that passion and that flame inside of this person. They'll drive miles and miles to see you burn. And God is saying, if when you encounter me, and when I give you a God-sized assignment, you need faith enough to step forward and watch me accomplish amazing things through you but it's not for your glory, it's for my glory. And it's to, 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 to build, to influence, uh, 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 to influence this earth, to influence a nation, to build my kingdom. And I want you, I sound like, um, what's, the, uh, what's the guy? Sam. I sound like Uncle Sam, I want you. God is saying, I want you, I want you with, with that hat on. God is saying, I want you to be a part of what I'm doing. I want you, I'm challenging you to step out of your comfort zone and step in the, the zone that's uncomfortable and watch me stabilize you. Peter, get out the boat. And I know water is unnatural to walk on. It's unnatural to walk on water. But if you keep your eyes on me, if you keep your eyes on me, I'll guide you, I'll guide you. Amen. Um, listen to this. God, it says, uh, another question in here. How did the people respond to God's activity? When, when, when God did miracles in the Bible, how did people respond? How, how did they observe it? What happened? Let's use Moses for an example. God told Moses to lead the Israelites to, to, uh, to camp beside the, the Red Sea. And God knew he was going, God knew. God knows the beginning from the end. He knew he was going to deliver them by dividing the Red Sea and letting them cross on dry ground. He says, 
This is what the, uh, the word of God says. He says, I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all of his army and, and all of his army and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. The Egyptians will know when, when we do, when, when we step into what God is challenging us to step into, the Egyptians in the world will know that I am, I am. If, if I say I am, or if you say I am, you've got to add something. You've got to say, I, I am a man, or, or, or I am a woman, or I am a, an airman, or I am a sailor, or I'm a soldier, or I am a pastor. I am a mom for, for uh, late Mother's Day. I am a mom, or I am a father or daughter. I am. We have to add something to that. But God alone can say I am, period. Without saying anything more. Why? Because God alone is. Everybody and everything else in the world becomes. But God is. God is. We're becoming something. From We've been becoming something. We go from faith to faith. Glory. We're becoming something. We're always becoming something from birth to death. But God never changes or becomes anything different from what we know he is. What he is, that he was, and that he will always be. He's God all by himself. He, he can say, I am. So when we encounter I am, man, big things crazy things come out of that it's crazy today it's faith tomorrow it's ridiculous today but it's 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 a city being discipled tomorrow when we say yes to god today what were the results of moses delivering the children of israel listen to what it says in exodus chapter 14 verses 31 Exodus chapter 14, verses 31, it says, when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they put their trust in him. The people feared the Lord and they put their trust in him. When God commanded Joshua to lead the Israelites across the Jordan River at flood stage, when the people saw that, they glorified God. They feared God. Listen, listen to this. He did this so that all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. And so that you, Israel, might always fear the Lord your God. Listen, uh, and I want to read this and, and we'll move on. Um, King Jehoshaphat. A vast army came against Israel. And King Jehoshaphat, he said, we've got to pray. Let's proclaim a fast and led the people to seek God's counsel. He prayed, Jehoshaphat, he prayed, oh, our God, we have no power to face this army that's attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you, Lord. This, this is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 12. He called a fast. And guess what? God responded. He says, do not be afraid or do not be discouraged because of this vast army. Why? For the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. You will not have to fight this battle alone. And then it goes on to say, take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord would give you. Jehoshaphat, listen to this now. Jehoshaphat sent a choir. He sent the praise team in front of the army, singing praises to God for his enduring love. Listen, he sent his praise team in front of the vast army, and they began to sing the lyrics of Micah W. Smith. Uh, Micah w. Smith. It may look like I'm surrounded, 
but I'm surrounded by you, O oh Lord. It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm defeated, but I am surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I win my battles. This is how I declare victory. When we, say, when we seek the Lord, when we say yes, man, God will do incredible things for his glory and so that the world, a watching world can see that our God, the God we serve is Lord. God destroyed the invading army um, before, even before Jehoshaphat and Israel even got on the battlefield. God had already taken care. That's why they can say, shout now before the battle even starts. That's why we can say that. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord came upon the kingdoms of the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against Israel. Listen, here in Kaiserslautern, or wherever you are in your city, or in your town, wherever you are, when you seek the Lord and step into the assignment of the Lord, that God will do the impossible in your life. And your testimony, your test, your test, it may be a test, your testimony will bring glory to God and it will bring, it will, it would be for the world watching. And your world may just be your family. Your world, it doesn't have to be a city. Your world may be your family. And in your family, God may be calling somebody out of your family. But he wants to use you and I to reach that family member. And that family member may be, that family member may be a Moses. That family member, that family member that you've written off that family member may be an Abraham, a nation might be in her, a nation might be in him. But we, we have to say yes to God. We have to develop a relationship, nourish a relationship with God. And God will do exceedingly abundantly. He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. I want to move on. Uh, we've got a few more things to, to chat about before we end tonight. But um, when Christians in the early church followed the direction of the Holy Spirit, God impacted their world. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak, um, um, pray in the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. Um, then Peter preached a message and 3,000 people were added to the church. Man, why aren't people being added to the church on our messages? Why was so many of us preaching and teaching on Zoom and on Facebook? Why are not thousands of people being added to the church? Why? Why aren't miracles that we see in the New Testament occurring in the church today? I wish I had an answer for you. I have, I have some ideas. But listen, they're not going to happen through us until we're completely surrendered and until we say yes and step in faith. Step in faith and not relying on our capabilities, not relying on our finances. We've got to, we, we, I often say this, and, and, and you might say it as well, we have to be wise. And I think there's wisdom. We have to use some common sense, but sometimes we wisdom our way out of faith and we common sense our way out of faith. And God is saying, listen, this is what I called you to do. And it may look foolish to everyone around you, but I'm calling you to it. Why don't you do it? Why don't you say yes to God? Why don't you say yes to him? When people saw God at work, 
through his servants, God got the victory. People were amazed and people were drawn into the kingdom of God. People were drawn into the kingdom of God. What our world often witnessed today is devoted, committed Christians. What they witness today is a church serving God, often in a mundane or just blah way. And I'm not criticizing any church. I, I, I'm not doing that. But they are not seeing God's great activity. I want to see that. As I'm sitting here telling you to, as I'm sitting here talking to you right now, I want to see the hand of the Lord work in City Mission. And I want to see the hand of the Lord work uh, in your church. I want to see the hand of the Lord work in your life. We are kingdom's kids. We are, we are the king's kids. We are kingdom citizens living in this earth. And with ki as kingdom citizens, there are, there are certain things that we have authority over in this earth. And, and we've got to begin to just de declare and walk in faith and see what God, only see what only God can do in our lives. I've got a few questions I want to ask. I want to ask you. I like number one. I like to hear what you've been praying about. I like to hear what you've been praying about. If you've been praying at all, I like to hear what you've been talking to talking to God about. I, I I like to hear what you've been pondering about. I like to hear what God is challenging you to to do that you're unable to accomplish by yourself. Drop it in the chat box. And we'll begin to pray and intercede with you. Another question I have for you. How will the world come to know God? How, based on what we're, we talked about tonight, how will the world come to know God? How will the world come to know God? I want you, I want you to respond to this. It's, it's, it's 759 right now. I'm going to rattle off these four more. And then we're going to pray and we're going to end. But why are people in our world not being attracted to Christ and his body or the church? Why are people in our world not being attracted to Christ and his church? Are we too religious? Are we using, are we using inside language on an outside world? Are, 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 are we so churchy that we can't reach our own children? We can't reach those that, that work beside us because we're, we're floating and, and, and they can't connect. We're not real with people. Why, why can't we reach? Why aren't we reaching? As a matter of fact, people in the church are walking away from the church. People are looking for authenticity. They're looking for someone that's real. And they're not looking for someone that, that speaks a language that they can't understand. What kind of assignments does God give his people? What kind of assignments? Please, I hope, you I hope you're, you're communicating and you're connecting with me. What kind of assignments does God give his people? And why does God give God-sized assignments that an individual or church cannot accomplish on their own. Why does God, why did God challenge Moses? Why did God challenge uh, a Joshua? Why did God challenge Esther? Why did God challenge his disciples? And why are God, why is God challenging you? Why is he challenging us to do God-sized assignments, or to do God-sized tasks? Why? I'm not saying God is not in the still small voices. What I'm saying is um, God often leads us to initiate or get involved in what he's already doing in this world. Amen. I love you. I want you 
to uh, continue to talk to me because when this over, when when this session is over, it shouldn't be over for you, because this is just not an hour session. We walk this out every day. We walk this out in our homes and on our jobs. This is just not a session to ah. Uh, this teaching is one hour. I've checked the box and it's over. No, I want you to ponder what's been said tonight. I want to challenge you to, to, to grow. I want to challenge you to, to talk to other people about what we're talking about tonight. That's disciple. That's discipleship making. This is not just the teaching. I mean, you can do it. You can, you can research and find all of this information out on your own. What Jackie is doing tonight is challenging you to be a disciple to be a passionate disciple that's after God's heart. God's heart is to extend my kingdom by making disciples. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm after. That's what God's after. And I hope that's what you're after. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being involved in this world. God, I thank you that you're resurrecting a passion inside of us. Oh God, to, to reclaim and to, to reevaluate what church looked like, to reevaluate who you called us to be. Holy Spirit, I pray, oh Lord, that you would stir a passion in us that will not go out. Lord, that you would set us ablaze, point us in a direction and I pray, oh Lord, that we would light up everything that we come in contact with. God, help us to be the kind of disciples that you called us to be. I pray, oh Lord, that we, were, we would rely on the Holy Spirit more than we've ever relied on the Holy Spirit to, to lead us in our speech, to lead us in our actions, that our lives would align with your word, God, in such a way that we would be life and light as you've called us to be. I pray, oh God, that we would have a heart like Paul, that we can become all things to all people to win some. It's by your grace and your mercy, your power, your strength, it's by your Holy Spirit that we are able to step into God-sized assignments and not fear because all we need is faith. And God, you'll do the rest. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Love you. Um, challenge you to stay in your word. I challenge you to pray. I challenge you every day to get up and say, God, I want to be intentional about stepping into what all, about stepping into all that you have and you feel your name in. Step into all that you have Jackie to do. Step into all that you have me to do today. And when it's challenging, so God, you, all you said, all I have to do is have the size, the faith, the size of a mustard seed. And I can move mountains. Amen. Join us tomorrow in prayer at 7 p.m. We're going to be uh, having intercessory prayer. If you want to be a part of that, I encourage you to drop us a note, PM us, um, and let us know you want to be a part, and we'll let you know how to get in. And then... Uh, and then again, we'll see you on Sunday at 11 a.m. Don't allow, don't allow Wednesday, Thursday, or Sunday to be the only time you connect with God. It's your responsibility to connect with God. Amen. Love you. We'll see you soon.